How's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video, we're going to be replacing a leaking indoor coil on a rude gas package system. Let's do some work. This video is sponsored by RLS, original, patented, proven, and by Diversitech, helping you simplify your work. All right, so while I'm gonna be removing everything and getting prepped for swapping the coil out, I'm gonna go ahead and pull a vacuum on this new tank just because that's what I like to do. So it already says it's in a vacuum, but I always like to pull my own vacuum just to verify if I'm ever gonna be reusing any of the refrigerant, which I plan to do. Uh, let's see, we'll pull a vacuum on the liquid side and use a micron gauge on the I'm sorry, on the vapor side and use the micron gauge on the liquid side. So what's cool about this scale is you want to weigh the tank before you add any refrigerant. So it has a separate function here for gross weight. So right now I can hit the tear button and it's going to clear out that section, but it keeps the gross weight up there so you don't have to remember what it was. So as an empty tank, it's 17 pounds. And then we can also measure how much is going in here as well. Pretty cool feature. So we pulled a little over a pound and a half out of the system and it actually calls for a little over three pounds. So definitely not going to reuse what's in there just because it is a blended refrigerant. And when you lose that much, um, you don't know what part of the mixture you lost. So what I'm going to do is just weigh in all new refrigerant so that way we know we're in good shape. So I'm basically ready to go ahead and cut this thing out on these coils They actually just kind of friction fit in there. There's a little bit of adhesive or uh, some weather stripping tape here and you kind of just pop it loose and then that's pretty much it. You just got to obviously disconnect your, your uh, vapor and your liquid line and should be good to go. So what I like to do whenever I'm replacing uh, coils or really any kind of components like that, I wanna open up the new one first and see what the connections are. So that way I disconnect it properly to set me up for uh, success when I'm installing the new one. Cause you never know what, what the new stuff comes with or what it doesn't come with for that matter. There you go. Just has the stubs on both sides. So now I know where I need to disconnect it from the existing one. All right, so to make it easy, I removed this bracket here so I can actually get to the lines, kind of pulled the coil up and out just a little bit to get it out of the pan. So I'm gonna unbraze the liquid line first and then I'll kind of lift this up so I can get to that joint here without hitting any of this insulation. So of course, whenever you're either brazing in or brazing or unbrazing to remove the pipe, you always wanna make sure you are purging nitrogen. So I got my, my purging uh, regulator on here, as you can see, um, kinda, Put it up to the purge mark there just to let just to flow for maybe a few seconds just to make sure all the the air is out of the lines 
and I put it on the high side here because I'm going to, again, I'm going to unbraze the liquid line first. So I put it on the high side. Now I can back it down to the braze. Should be good to go. Now I don't have to worry about protecting the valve because this is far enough away that it's not going to damage the valve. Let it cool down, it won't stick anymore. Now I can lift the coil up. So I just used my drill to prop up the coil so now I can easily unbraze this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of friction fit that back in there. So that way when I'm purging nitrogen, it just doesn't just dump out of here. It'll actually go through this uh, part of the system as well. But I'm going to go ahead and switch it over to the low side. I could probably leave it, but I don't know. It just makes me feel better that it's going directly to the low side. Again... I'm going to purge it just to make sure all the air is out. And now I'll back it down. Nice. So I just realized I just made a boo-boo. You may have already caught that, but I did not need to unbraze this equalizing line here, equalizer line, because I only needed to disconnect it from here. This is all staying. I'm not actually replacing the valve. <laughs> I wasn't thinking, I don't even know why I did that, but oh well, just braze it back in, no big deal. But we all make mistakes sometimes. All right, so I've got everything dry fitted, liquid line, vapor line, <laughs> this uh, equalizer line, and then I already went ahead and removed the old dryer and got the new one dry fitted. So now we're ready to purge, start brazing. Almost forgot. Need to put some of this, uh, heat putty around these joints because where it goes from copper to aluminum, that's, that solder joint there is going to be, um, it has a lower melting point. So because we're so close to it, I wanna put some heat putty around that so we don't damage that connection. Same thing with up here on the vapor line. And um, probably put some on the dryer so there we go, got that nice and protected. Same thing up here on the vapor line. Should be good to go now. I got this little solder weld uh, heat resistant blanket just to kind of protect that insulation that's right there. Um, that'll make it a lot easier when I'm trying to braze this in. I always like to start on the coupler because that's the thickest part. So I want to heat up where both metals are engaging and then I kind of work from there. I always do the, the most difficult side, the, the very back side first. 
and then I work my way around like so. You want to make sure you're actually pulling the solder down into the coupling. So you have the heat down lower and it'll, it'll pull it down in. Like so. And then you can give it a nice little cap, but you can kind of see how far it goes in. So once I have everything brazed in, I want it to cool down naturally. I don't want to use a wet rag or anything like that. So what I'll do is I'll just, you know, I'm already uh, purging, so I'll just crank it up and run some nitrogen through it. That'll kind of help cool things down a little bit faster as well. All right, so I'm switched over to my other regulator. This is the one that I like to use for pressure testing just because you can get up to your pressure a lot faster. Um, that other regulator takes pressure to build up, so it just takes a long time if you're wanting to pressurize pretty quick. So anyhow, got this switched over, got my core uh, tool in there so that way I can valve it off, remove the hoses, because I do not use manifolds for pressure testing. I keep it simple as possible. That way, minimize any, any you know, uh, potential leaks with the hoses and fittings and whatnot. So I got my uh, wireless probe on here. So now we can go ahead and get this thing pressurized. Fifteen minutes later. All right, obviously pressure test went well. I'm gonna check the oil on this vacuum because I feel like it didn't pull down that recovery tank as quick as I thought it should have. So I'm just gonna hook up my micron gauge and then just test the oil real quick. I'd say that's pretty good. So whenever I'm pulling vacuums, obviously I'm not using a set of gauges, just like recovery. Um, I use the core, I remove the cores, have the tools on there. I have a half inch hose here, inner diameter hose. It's got the three eighths connection on the other side. On this, on this pump, there's two three eighths ports. So that works out well to be able to have both hoses ran. Um, and then micron gauge, I will hook up to the vapor line. I always hook up to the bigger line of the two. Just, I feel like that gives me a better, more accurate reading. So, and whenever I'm working on an existing system like this, where you're, op you're pulling a vacuum on the compressor with the existing oil, I'll do a two pipe system like this. Let's say it was a split unit, but I was only pulling on the line set in the indoor coil, I would actually do a one hose setup. So I would do my hose on the vapor line and then hook up my micron gauge directly to the liquid line. So that way the micron gauge is as far away as possible from the pump. That's gonna give you a super accurate reading. But again, today we're pulling on the oil, so I wanna have both hoses hooked up. That'll make it a lot faster. On some pumps, you have a, um, a gas ballast valve, like on this one here. So I leave it open until my microns get down to about 1,500, 1,200 microns, and then I'll close it. Basically what that does, it doesn't allow to pull uh, the vacuum through the oil. So that way, if there's any kind of you know, contaminants or anything, not contaminants, but there's anything in the system you're getting rid of all that first, any kind of moisture, and then you close it, and then you'll be able to pull a deeper vacuum at that point. So that's the way I do it. All right, so looking at the nameplate here, 
see we have 410 and we've got 53.6 ounces factory charge so let's change this over to instead of pounds and ounces we'll just change the units to where it's just ounces there we go we'll go ahead and zero that out it's already purged go ahead and open the valve Alrighty. Well, that pretty much complete today's video. This job went pretty smooth. Pretty happy with everything, the way it turned out. New, uh, old coil out, new coil in, pressure test went good, vacuum went good. Um, as you could tell, I didn't pull in all the refrigerant, so I had to get it running just to suck in a little bit more to get it to that uh, 53 and a half ounces of total charge. So there you go. I hope you guys got something out of this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Really appreciate you guys being here, watching the videos, taking time out of your life. It really does mean a lot to me. So thank you so much, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Woo!